Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the Progressive Channel, where we take a look at yourself, your personality, your career, your relationships from the point of view where the knowledge is usable, it's practical. It's not just psychology and mind reading over here. It's based on your birth chart as per the Vedic horoscopes, and then we'll take it from there. Also, check out my podcast on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, and on Apple Podcasts. I'm also available on Facebook if you need a consultation. I'm also available on LinkedIn page. So please make sure you like, subscribe, and let's get on with the show today. What's today about? It's the bad boy club, the Rakshasaganas, the worst of the lot. No, I'm just kidding. So it's the bad boy club of the Zodiacs. This is the bad boy club. It doesn't get any more gangster than this, okay? So check out this entire presentation, whatever we are having a look at, and you will see what the bad boy clubs of this planet are made of and why. Okay, we'll go step by step. Take care and like, share, subscribe. Don't forget. Hello everyone, welcome again. This is the presentation for the last of the series of the nine constellations of Vedic astrology, the groups of nine. There are Two others we spoke of, the Sattvic and the Rajasic ones, which were the Devgana and the Manushagana. Now we talk about the Tamasic lot, the bad boy club, the gangsta club of the Zodiac. What are they made of? Let's see one by one. First one of the bad boy club, Kritika Nakshatra, falls in the Zodiac sign of Taurus. It is active, female, sharp, and rajasic. You can even see the symbol of a knife there. They want to cut through things. These are the guys who are driven towards leadership. Let's see what they are about. Nakshatra is ruled by the sun, but it falls in Taurus. Therefore, Mercury, uh, sorry, Venus is showing up there in the corner. Other themes of their life, they are warrior-like. They have leadership skills. These are the people who are driven wanting to be the CEOs and the managers and the leaders of the world. They keep talking about leadership all the time. They're driven to be leaders. Why? The sun is there. The sun wants to be the show-off, the leader, leader of people. Doesn't necessarily mean they are uh, sattvic, okay? This is a rakshasakana. They are risk-takers. They are problem-solving skills. They have a theme of rejection in love, being rejected. That's the worst of the lot, isn't it? Being rejected in love. They have lustful passions and affairs. Many of the Hollywood people, Bollywood people can be found under this nakshatra. Okay, that's the first of the lot. Falls in the sign of Taurus. Next one. Next one on our list is Ashlesha nakshatra. is ruled by the Nagas, the snakes, the mystical people. Falls in the zodiac sign of Cancer. It is active, female, sharp, and tamasic. Now, Ashlesha is symbolized by the cat, as you can see over there. The animal is a cat, and cats are very deceptive. They're very self-centered kind of creatures. By the animal and the bird, you can tell a lot about a nakshatra. That's why I say pay attention to the entire picture. It speaks a million words here. So this nakshatra is ruled by Mercury, but falls in the sign of Cancer, therefore the moon sign over there. The themes of this nakshatra which will play out, people who are born with more points or planets in this, transformation, awakening, healing. They feel discriminated against, they feel victimized through their life. They have sensual and seductive eyes. They have secrets. They are very secretive kind of people. Remember the snake is a very secretive creature. So is the cat. They are into mysticism. Snakes have always st stood for mysticism throughout the ages in different cultures, as you know. Even the medical science field has the snakes, the, I forget what the name is called, the intertwining snakes, caduceus, yes, the caduceus symbol. They are difficult to read. They are difficult to figure out, these people. Okay. Next one on the list is the Maha Nakshatra, which falls in the sign of Leo. Leo, the ones who are driven to want to be the leader of the pack. They are Rakshasakana again. Their characteristics are they are active, female-like energy. See, all these tamasic energies are very female-like. That should give you a story. Female energy, not as female as in a human body, is the female energy. That means they are very introverted types. They bring things from inside to out. That's why they are very intuitive also. 
They are fierce and tamasic, symbolized by the royal throne, means they want that throne. Okay. They are independent and entrepreneurial by nature. They can become very egoistic and power hungry. See, they are the themes of power. They are all about ancestral energy, lineage and authority. They will be driven towards being the authority in whatever they take up. It's a nakshatra ruled by Ketu, so it's very withdrawn again. And falls in the uh, sun sign of Leo, which is ruled by the sun. So sun and Ketu make a powerful ancestral energy right there. Next on our list is Chitra Nakshatra. After Leo comes Virgo and Libra. This falls half in the sign of Virgo, half in the sign of Libra. Therefore, you see Mercury and Venus there. It is active, female, soft and tamasic. Soft and tamasic. The reason it is soft and tamasic is because these people are more into arts. So their themes are success through age or spirituality. One of these things they have to take up. Either they have to get older and they get wiser or they have to go through the spiritual path. These are the themes. They are into opportunity, finding opportunists. They have great intuition. They are charming. They are skill and crafts. And the theme, one of the prominent themes would be fighting against formidable opponents in life. They will have opponents in life. And that's what gives them being in the sign of nakshatra driven by Mars, they will have a theme of fighting with the opponents in life. Next one on the list, Vishakha nakshatra falls in the zodiac sign of Libra. It is symbolized by a potter's wheel. It's a nakshatra ruled by Jupiter, falls in the sign of Libra ruled by Venus. So it's about one-pointedness. The themes of this nakshatra, it is having one-pointedness. It will work with duality. Duality 101 is Vishakha. So it will work with two things. Vishakha is also called the forked one. The fork in the road. Okay. So they will work between spiritual and materialism. They are confused between should I take this or should I take that? Because they both are opposing forces. Let's face it. Spiritual and materialism don't go hand in hand. Therefore, they have transformation points in life. Another theme they have is infidelity, delayed success and failed relationships. Okay, and the themes of Vishakha Nakshatra. Next one on the list is Jeshtha Nakshatra, which falls in the sign of Scorpio. So Scorpio right there is ruled by Ketu and Mars and co-ruled by Pluto. The nakshatra itself is ruled by Mercury. So it's active, female, sharp and sattvic. Because it's Mercury, it's got to do everything with communication. Communication will be the dominant underlying theme for them to learn from. So they have themes of achievement, beauty, wealth, kindness, empathy, achievement of goals. They can be open and impulsive, very rash temper and they can be touchy. Very touchy people, Jeshta people. Okay. I know quite a few of them. Next on our list will be the Mula Nakshatra, the root. Mula means the root. They falls in the sign of Sagittarius. It is active, neuter means neutral gender, sharp and tamasic. The symbol is of an elephant goat over there, one which is an old instrument to catch elephants. It's a nakshatra ruled by Ketu, falls in the zodiac sign of Sagittarius, ruled by Jupiter. It is purposeful, adventurous, intrusive, very self-centered. They are unforgiving. They have a determination and they are pathfinders. Just like dogs, you know, they could love to digging deep. Mula is about digging deep. That's why it's called roots. It's symbolized by a bunch of roots tied together. So it's all about determination and finding the path. They can be indecisive, which is a little downside to them. Next one on the list is Dhanishta Nakshatra, which falls half in the sign of Capricorn, half in the sign of Aquarius. So this has got Saturn ruling behind it. Although the nakshatra is ruled by Mars. So Aquarian energy comes into play, the unconventional one. It's active, female, changeable and tamasic because Aquarius is changeable. It's a fixed sign I know, but it's variable. Their mind fluctuates here and there. So what is Dhanishta about? It is signified by a musical instrument, a wind instrument, like you can see a symbol of a flute or a drum even. They are into dance and music, creativity, wealth, 
versatility they're friendly and energetic they have organizational capability in the modern world that's needed they are liberal aquarius is very liberal they're devoted they could be ruthless and self-obsessed even the mahabharat character uh, bhishma was supposed to have born in the nakshatra of dhanishta he was ruthless he was self-obsessed it's all about me and my principles right Next one on the list is Shatabhisha. It also is Shatabhisha. Shatab means 100 in Sanskrit. Shatabhisha is one who requires 100 physicians to straighten their backside. Imagine that. So, why is that so? You can see already a lot of Rahu energy there. The Nakshatra is ruled by Rahu and Aquarius is by default Rahu and Saturn and Uranus. So, these can be the most unconventional, unpredictable people. So they are active, neuter, changeable and tamasic. What is their other characteristics? Ability to discover mystery and secrets. They are about mystique and trying to find, eager to find things. Okay, different, different kind. But in a very unconventional way because Uranus comes in place there. They are stubborn. They are healing. They have mindfulness about them. They are needy of people. Low self-esteem. Aquarius wants to go out into the world and get self-esteem from there. That's the problem with Aquarius because 11th house is stuck in the first house. And they can be uncommunicative. Okay, This was the last of the nine of the gangsta boys of the Zodiac. Keep a watch on the channel and follow my podcast as well, which I have indicated before and linked below. You can go and listen to them as well. They are a little different take and a deeper take on all the Vedic nakshatras and the schemes and what is astrology about and how we can use them practically. It's all about being practical people. All right. Take care.